I once had the chance to visit Alcatraz, not as an inmate, but on a video shoot. Just to clarify, we took our cameras to solitary confinement. And in that location, there were certain cells that were known as the hole. They were small, soundproofed, and completely dark. A prisoner would be here all by himself 24 hours a day. Have you ever felt like you're all alone? Before the pandemic, there was an epidemic of loneliness in our culture, and now those feelings are off the charts. In times like these, we lean into the truth that even when I'm all by myself, I'm never really alone. The good shepherd is with me, and that's what gives me courage. Welcome to Living Courageously.
there's a scripture that my grandpa used to always say, and then my dad started to say it all the time, and now I'm starting to say it all the time to my kids. And if you know it, say it with me. It goes, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this week we had a chance to catch up with Dwayne Chapman. Actually, you might know him a little bit better as Dog the Bounty Hunter. Let's go ahead and take a look at what he had to say. One of the special memories I have at the cathedral is when Dog the Bounty Hunter was with us. We were in the green room waiting for service, and my grandson needed a diaper change. Now, I've never been that good with diapers. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But Doc jumped right in, and he took little Eli, and he changed his diaper, and then he showed my daughter how to put Eli in a football hold, and uh, he wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty, literally. And so it's so great to have him with us today. Doc the Bounty Hunter joins us. Doc, thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me with you. Aloha. How have you and your family been holding up during the pandemic? Well, we're, you know, trying to obey rules. It's hard. Mm. Uh, there's nothing open, so you better be in love with whoever you're with, and thank God we are. When did you first surrender your life to Christ? I'm uh, half Native American, half Apache, and uh, Chiricahua Apache. So back in the day, Apaches were the only ones really that believed in Jesus. So I imagine since I was born, my mother was Christian, and so I guess my whole life. I've been, you know, God-led and, and God-serving most of it. I, I know when you were with us at the church, you, you mentioned that, I think it was when you were a teenager, uh, that God gave you a word that someday you would have a, a, a big platform to share your faith. Can you tell us about that moment? Well, I was uh, a couple, I remember. I was uh, on the reservation. My mother took me to visit, and I was by the fire one night and the Navajo women started dancing around the fire and they said, this is him. Mm. And they said, uh, he's going to spread. Back then it was called the gospel. And they said, he will have millions of people. He will, will follow him. And so when uh, a while back we hit over a million followers of my Insta Instagram, Facebook, and all that together, I was like, oh, my God. In the show, whenever you uh, capture someone, it's always moving to me. You'll give them an encouraging word that they can choose a different path and make their life better. Why is that so important to you? Well, we all have our uh, sheep. And my or the devil's herd. And the close of the Bible says, where sin doth abound, grace much more doth abound. Amen. And let me tell you, I, I deal with the first-class sinners. And I, I just feel obligated that I am the guy that they met. And we've met, I've arrested 8,000 fugitives, men and women. And there's, I don't think, one that I wasn't supposed to meet. Mm. So I'm that, you know, that. Uh, so far still is my life to meet those kind of people and to, you know, at least push them. The Bible says, uh, you plant the seed, I'll make it grow. Amen. That's, that's the mission of Jesus. You know, he came to seek and save those who are lost. Dog, thanks so much for your time. Stay safe, stay strong, and believing for great days ahead. Well, one of the things we've been doing every week is giving you an update on how reaching out is scaling up to meet the massive need in our area. And we couldn't do what we do without amazing partners. We had partners step up this week and provide 40,000 masks for us to take to the most vulnerable in our community, senior assisted living complexes. Take a look at what's been happening. Today, we lift up the leaders of our great nation, our president, our Congress, our governors, our mayors, and all those who are in authority. Lord, that you would grant them wisdom and divine insight, that you would strengthen them, that you would protect them, and that you would unite them. And Lord, we pray for the people of this wonderful country, God, that you do what only you can do by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would grant them peace that passes all understanding, 
that you would provide healing where there is sickness, and that you would provide hope where there is despair, and that we declare your word that we can be strong and we can be courageous, for you are with us wherever we go. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. We ask this in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. people ask me, what, what can God do in shelter in place? Well, I know what he's done in the past. When we look in the word, he sheltered Noah and his family in place for a year, and they came out to new beginnings. 
He sheltered Moses in place for 40 years in the desert, and he came out with fulfilled promises and God doing great things. He sheltered Jonah in place for three days and three nights inside a whale, and a whole city came to God. He sheltered the disciples in place in the upper room for 10 days. They came out filled with the Spirit and saw amazing miracles. And he sheltered Jesus in place for three days, and he came out to bring life to all. That's what God's done in the past when he sheltered people in place. I'm believing he can do the same thing for us. Fullness of the Spirit, our community coming to Christ, new beginnings, new promises. Let's believe together for God to do great things. So in the meantime, what do we do? Well, one of the things we do is pray. I want to thank you for sending your prayer request to us. You can see the email address at the bottom of the screen. Many of you have already sent so many of your prayer requests, and we're so grateful that we can join with you and believe for what God's going to do in this season. There's a a lady whose elderly mom is struggling with anxiety and with depression. There's a family whose grandson has Crohn's disease. There's a husband and wife who both lost their jobs. There's someone who's having a hard time sleeping with no work or money. There's a marriage that's struggling. We're going to pray for these requests and pray for you as we have been. So you can send them to us. You see that email at the bottom. I also want to share with you, God's been answering prayers. We had some families that said, God supplied a job. And another family shared how their teenage daughters had an issue with diabetes for a while. And God supplied all that was needed for this new season to bless her and help her. I want to share a personal testimony. My mom just came through a cancer surgery and she's cancer free. No more treatment needed. I'm praising God that he answers prayer. And he's going to answer your prayers too. So while we're waiting and sheltering in place, we can pray, but we can also give. You can see at the bottom of the screen the number to text give to. We encourage you to be faithful to send your gifts. You can be part of what God's doing in this season, responding to his goodness, anticipating what he has in store for us. You can also go to our app. You can go to our Facebook page. You can go to the church and drop off your gifts or you can mail them to us. I want to speak God's blessing on you, but before I do, I want to share some passages of Scripture about sheltering in place. They first come from Psalm 46, and it says this, God is our shelter and strength. He is always ready to help. Psalm 91 said, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And then finally, Psalm 61 says, Lord, You have been a shelter and strong tower. I will fulfill my promises to you. That's what we do in this moment of bringing our gifts. We fulfill our promises to the Lord. And as we pray and as we give, we anticipate what he's going to do. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to each family. Reach into each home and bring hope, bring expectation that yes, good things came out of sheltering in place in Bible days and good things come, come out of sheltering in place even now. Lord, we lift all these prayer requests before you. All of our family members bless and work in supernatural ways. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Looking forward to the day we can all gather again. Oh, happy day. Happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus was, when Jesus was, when Jesus
wash my sins away. I wanted you to meet who I have been sheltering in place with. Of course, there's my wonderful wife, Elisa. She's been with me for 36 years. Boy, that qualifies her for sainthood. And then there is our dog, Arthur. Arthur is an Irish wolfhound. He weighs 190 pounds. When he stands up and puts his paws on my shoulders, he's over six and a half feet tall. Now, there are records of Irish wolfhounds that go all the way back to the days of the Roman Empire. They would use this dog in battle to knock soldiers off their horses. The most often question we are asked about Arthur is, where does he sleep? And the answer to that question is, wherever he wants to. Thanks for joining me, Arthur. I'll see you back at home. I love you, honey. Before we had Arthur, we had a dog who had the heart the size of a wolfhound, but physically he was the size of a shoebox. His name was Rusty. And as a Welsh terrier, they have a notorious reputation for wandering off. One day, that's exactly what he did. The side gate was left open. He wandered off and we went searching for him. We went from this street to that street. We asked this person and that person. Eventually, we put signs up all over the neighborhood and we searched and searched until we eventually found him. And when we did, there really was joy. So much joy in that moment. And this is the picture that Jesus gives to us in Luke chapter 15 of what God is really like. We read, so Jesus told them a story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. And when he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. If Jesus does give us the clearest picture of what God is like, what a picture we have. That God is like a shepherd who seeks after us. He leaves the 99 and comes searching for us. 
in every other major religion of the world, the emphasis is on men and women who are seeking after God. But in the words of Jesus, we find a God who comes seeking after us. Jesus comes all the way from heaven to earth and he lives the perfect life we could not live. And then he dies the death that we deserve to die. And then he comes back from the dead to prove that he is who he says he is. And he can do what he says he can do. This was the mission statement of Jesus. That the son of man came to seek and to save those who were lost. What a striking picture. God loves you so much. He will leave the 99 and search for you until he finds you. And when he does, all heaven throws a party. Because of this story, our search for significance, it's over. A hundred years ago, we weren't sure if we were the only galaxy that existed in the universe. But as technology has advanced, we now know that there are a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. There are over 10 billion trillion planets. And when you think of being one little person on this one little planet in the vastness of space, it can leave you feeling very small and insignificant until we run into the words of Jesus and we get a picture of a God who loves that one little person on that one tiny planet so much he leaves the 99 and comes searching for the one. Does that surprise you? It surprised the first tears of this story. Perhaps you saw on a Twitter feed recently how a herd of goats broke out of their pen and were wandering, or I should say, eating their way through a San Jose neighborhood. And if back in the first century, you had a flock of sheep that was this big, if you had a hundred sheep, that meant that you were a very wealthy person. And if you lost one of those sheep, you would do one of two things. You would either chalk it up to the cost of doing business, or you would hire somebody to go and look for that lost sheep. You would never in a million years leave the 99 to go looking for that one. It was way too risky and way too reckless, but that is the point. Jesus captures our attention. And he says, you have a God who, well, takes the risk because that's how much you matter to him. When that really gets a hold of your heart, your search for significance is over. What do you base your significance on? Some people base it on their money or their fame or their looks. But if you base it on that, all of those things can disappear. Here's a picture of me just 10 years ago and look at how my good looks are disappearing. Instead, base your sense of significance on the sure foundation of the words of Jesus. Then the words of Jesus, we come to understand that there is indeed a God. If there is no God and we're all just the products of random chance, then there's no need to talk about this issue of significance because all we really are are blobs of matter. And at the end of the day, we don't matter at all. But in the words of Jesus, we come to understand that there is a God and this is his nature. This is his character. He loves us so much. He comes seeking and searching after us. Let that take hold of your heart. When it does, your search for significance, it's over. Someone needs to know that. As a church, we've been stepping up and, and going to the senior complexes in the area and bringing groceries and delivering masks 
because our seniors are the most vulnerable population. And every time I go out, my heart is deeply moved because seniors more than ever are feeling more isolated. My mom is 85 years old and boy, in talking with her, I can see when you're feeling isolated and you can't do what you used to do, you can't go where you used to go, all that stuff can get in your head and your heart and you can wonder, why am I still here? Does my life have any value? And I wanna share with you today that your value is not based on what you do. Your value is based on who you are. You are made in the image of God. Well, from the conception, the moment of your conception to the time of your birth and beyond, you're of infinite value. Look at the price God paid for you so that he could have you back. First Peter chapter one says this, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ. Well, the blood of Christ has infinite value and that was the price that was paid because you have infinite value to God. Because of this story, we know our search for significance, it's over, we matter to God. And then we understand that slowing down helps us. Well, it keeps us from drifting away. In Isaiah chapter 53, we read, all of us like sheep have strayed away. How do sheep actually stray away? It's a little bit like there were these two guys who were in a store shopping and they were pushing carts and their carts bump into each other. And one of them said, excuse me, sir, I'm sorry, I'm looking for my wife. And the other one said, well, I'm looking for my wife too. And I really need to find her fast. So the first man said, maybe I can help. What does she look like? And the second man said, well, she has this long flowing dark hair and these ocean deep blue eyes and she's, tall and has a slender athletic figure. What does your wife look like? And the first man said, never mind. Let's just look for your wife. If you have ever gone shopping with your wife, one moment you are at the store and you are together. And the next moment you turn around and you wonder where is she gone? And well, she just got drifting and wandering away, looking at this dress and then looking at this dress and then looking at this dress. And pretty soon she looks up. She doesn't know where you are. You don't know where she is. She didn't intend on getting lost. She just sort of drifted away. The same thing is true when it comes to sheep. Sheep don't intend on getting lost. Instead, they just kind of drift from one pasture to the next pasture to the next pasture. And then they look up. Where's the shepherd? Where's the flock? Where am I? The same kind of thing can happen to us. It really can. There are all kinds of ways we can get lost, but sometimes we get lost just by drifting away. We don't intend to get lost but we drift from here to there and here to there. We look up and we say, where's the shepherd? Where's the flock? Where am I? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter one, pay the most careful attention so that we do not drift away. It seems to me for those who live in the Bay Area, one of the things that causes us to drift away is hurry. Before the pandemic, our lives looked like they were on fast forward. And when you're moving that fast, one of the things that can get lost are the things that nurture the spirit and feed the soul. The great 
Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung once said, hurry is not of the devil, hurry is the devil. Hurry can take away those things that nurture your soul and feed your spirit. And before you know it, you wonder, where have I gone? And that's why we have to be extra intentional here in the Bay Area to slow down enough. And one of the things about the pandemic, it's not a good thing, it's a bad thing, but one of the good things that's come out of it is it's caused us to slow down enough to take stock of where we really are. And we begin to do those kinds of things. The Wall Street Journal ran an article entitled The Science of Prayer. And they talked about how many people are turning to prayer during this pandemic. One young lady who lives in New York City, she said this, she says, when I bust out a quick prayer, especially out loud, I feel a shift inside myself from tension and distrust to a more trusting, hopeful feeling. Slowing down enough to nurture the soul, to say our prayers, to read the Bible, to love our neighbors, to be with each other virtually. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews, it says this, let us consider how we can stir up one another to love. Let us help one another to do good works and let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing this. Instead, let us encourage one another with words of hope. Every time we meet together, even when it's virtually, this is one of the ways we keep from drifting away, slowing down enough to feed the spirit. The last thing I'd like you to think about in this story is that being found means finding joy. There's rejoicing going on when the lost one is found. When our kids were young, we would take them to Disneyland. The great thing about having kids and now grandkids is it gives you an excuse to do the things that you really want to do and enjoy. So we're all down in Disneyland. I'm having an absolute blast. We go over on a raft to an island and on this island is a cave. There's one entrance into the cave. What we didn't realize is there's several exits out of the cave. And well, as we're going through the cave, somehow we get disconnected from our daughter and now we can't find her. So my son goes through the caves. I go to one end of the island. My wife goes to the other end of the island and we're ready to lock down the island, to lock down the park. And then I see in the distance, a worker with my daughter and I'll never forget that moment, never. The tears in my daughter's eyes and the feeling of relief that I had, that the one who was lost was now found. To be lost is a terrible thing, especially when it comes to being disconnected from the shepherd. It was a country Western superstar by the name of Johnny Cash. He's now passed away. It, he was once being interviewed about his own personal journey. And he talked about a moment in his life where, well, he was in a lot of pain and he turned to drugs in the middle of the pain to try and numb the pain. And it worked for a while, but eventually it devastated him physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and he said that last one, to be disconnected spiritually was the worst. He said, there is no lonelier place to be. I was separated from God and I was not even trying to call on him. To be disconnected from God. There's a God who made you. You've been made by God and for God. You were made to run on God. And to be connect, disconnected from the shepherd, let me ask you a question. Are you disconnected from the shepherd today, even if you're not calling out to him? If you listen carefully, 
He's calling out to you. Maybe you're disconnected, that you don't have a relationship with God. The way you start a relationship with God is by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter one, to all who did receive Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. This is the moment when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, when God becomes more than a shepherd or the shepherd, God becomes my shepherd. Maybe I have a relationship with God, but I don't. Well, I've lost that sense of fellowship with him. The closeness, the connection that I used to have, we just feel different. Or perhaps in the middle of this pandemic, you just feel lost. There's a friend of a friend. She has a lot going for a great family, plenty of money. But in the middle of this pandemic, she feels like she's lost control of so many things. Wow, there's this great disorientation and she's lost in her anxiety. However you are lost today, the good news is God is able to find you. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11 says, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. God is seeking after you and he's able to find you. Sometimes we think we found God, but the bigger picture is this. God is the one who finds us. And when he does, when he picks us up and carries us close to his heart and there's rejoicing, we're reconnected with the God who's made us. What a celebration there is. Have you ever seen a dancing sheep? Well, get ready to. When you're reconnected with God. If you need to begin a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, I invite you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my savior. Forgive me of my sins. I make you Lord of my life. I put you in charge. I surrender my life to you. Thank you for loving me like you do and making me a part of your family. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you've just started a relationship with God through Jesus Christ and all heaven is celebrating this moment. It's not the end of the journey. It's just the start of it, a journey. And here's what I'd encourage you to do. Begin to pray. You know, pray the Lord's prayer. It's the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Begin to read through the New Testament. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Learn about Jesus and the words of Jesus. They're found in those books. And then finally, when, well, this pandemic when we're on the other side of this and we can meet together again, get plugged into a local church. It's so important. We really are better when we are together. Thank you again for allowing us to come into your home. And if you'd love to, if you'd contact us, we'd love to hear from you. You know, you can contact us on social media or you can give us a call at the church. For today's benediction, we go to our friend Renee Schlaffer, a pastor over in Aptos. Hi, my name's Renee. I'm one of the pastors over at Twin Lakes Church in Santa Cruz, and it is such a joy today to be able to join my good friend Ken Foreman and all my friends there at Cathedral of Faith in San Jose. Hey, let me speak this blessing over you straight from my house into your house. And this is from Romans 15, 13. May the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Yo, what's up, everybody? Hey. It's The Wrap. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Vaughn. This is Irene. We have uh, Cedric, Ramel, and Alora here, and we are here to, for the After Wrap. We had another amazing service. Pastor Ken's been killing it, knocking it out of the park. You know what it is when we talk about stuff that stuck out to us, and you're in the chat. Please go ahead and just try, type some things out, man. Your, your word encourages other people's words, so type it in in that chat room and, and share what God has given you. Pastor Cedric. What hit you this service? I thought it was really cool when um, Pastor Ken shared about how the shepherd leaves the 99 to go find the one. Because as, as much as we always say how we found God or, 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 or when we found God, the truth is I was never looking for God. When I met God, I was actually looking for free food. <laughs> And they told me, they told me there was going to be free food at the Bible study. And so I went. And the rest is Christianity history. But if, 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 it, if it was all left up to my own choices, I would have never found God. And the Bible says that the Son of Man came to seek and save those who were lost. So God had to just step into my life and intervene and bring me back to the fold. It's a nuance that changes everything. It's a, it absolutely does. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to be the downer. That scripture was so hard for me to receive and even to understand it because when you come from such a broken place like me, I, the spirit of uh, rejection was so heavy in my life, you know. I could not understand. I mean, my own biological father left us and never uh, once looked back. So how could this God that you're talking about will leave a 99 look for for one i mean that was so hard for it took so many years for me to really receive that because like i said the rejection started when i was such a young age but god is so good that he doesn't stop chasing us his love just till you get it till you know his love you know yeah that is like he said in a different way that there all other religions um humanity is seeking after god but in us and Christianity with Christ, he is seeking after us. And I love that he said his mission statement is to seek and save that which is lost. Yeah. That is so beautiful, makes it so simple. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think even related to that is the concept that stuck out to me, which was drifting and how the sheep, you know, it, I got the picture. You're like, you don't have the, the picture of a rebellious sheep that says, I want to get out of here. Yeah. It's this casual choice after choice that just kind of, before you know it, you're lost. Yeah. And I think that's so important uh, that we understand yeah. too, like in our own life, it's, it's n no one really wakes up and says, I wanna ruin my life today. That's right. <laughs> right, everyone wakes up and says, hey, well, since I'm here, I can reach this, I might yeah. as well try this. Yeah. And then once you're over here, now you can reach this room. And then once you get over, it's, so it's just one decision after the next, and before you know it, we're lost. And, and he, Pastor Ken painted that picture of how we can even get lost in this period of isolation, yeah. um, where you're in, in this isolated place and you start to, uh, you know, feel like, you know, do I really matter? Yeah. And it really hit me uh, when he used that population of those 65 and overs um, that you folks went from, you know, being at retirement um, to becoming at risk, Ooh. just like that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, you feel like, do I really matter? And man, I just want to put a shout out to all of yeah. um, you you 65 and overs that you really matter um, now more than ever yes. um, because I'll tell you who's out there serving and who's helping it's you guys and I just keep praying that you guys stay healthy that you guys stay strong and that through you folks will prove that together we can get through this yeah that's an yeah. example of, of being somewhat isolated or lost and it wasn't your choice that's right right it was it that's was right. beyond them right. so yeah that's really and the th awesome. fact of the matter is no matter where you're lost how you get lost right. Right, you will be found. That's it. Yeah. He's coming after you, and you will coming be after. found. Be yeah. confident in this. Yeah. I just love it when uh, Pastor Ken shared that um, that we are human beings and not human doings, right? Yeah. And so that, that that really emphasized the point that it's not about what we do or what we've done, but it's because of who we are as His creation and as His children. It's all about what He's done for us, right? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. And as human beings, we need to eat, right, Pastor Cedric? That's right. So. <laughs> yeah. Find that Bible study. <laughs> Find that Bible study. <laughs> Plug into that Bible study. You know, I have a story of being lost. Uh, when my girls were, at, I think they were nine and six years old, and we're in Target. So, you know, you're just looking, and all of a sudden, I right. look around, and where's right. my girls? Right. Nowhere to be found. Ten minutes after, Scary. intercom. Aurora, please come to the front. Uh. 
your two daughters are here looking for you. <laughs> They're so as you can you. see us coming, I was Whoa. so embarrassed. There's my two girls, a little bit upset, a little bit crying. Yeah, yeah. And, but it just kind of dawned on me. That's how we do something in our issue or we have problems. Yeah. We panic instead of go, going straight to the source and calling on God. You know? and, and nine and six years old know better what, what to do when wow. you're lost. Yeah. So. And, how, and how, about, how about that? You, the, the, the guilt right? and, the, and, the, and the shame of being lost being turned into joy and celebration yeah. when you're found. Right. Man, that was, that was yeah. big for me. That was super great. Well, today we have our scripture, and it is John chapter 1, verse 12, and it says, to all who receive him. I love that because it includes everybody. And to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And I love that it says the right, like not just a gift. It's a right. So I just pray wherever you're at that you would hold on to that, that you would believe, you would hold on and know, I am God's son, I am God's daughter. Amen. Amen. And if, if you are sons and daughters, that means we're brothers and sisters. That's yes. right. And so <laughs> we are family. Yeah, we are family. And guess yes. what? The party's not over because no, in just a little bit, 1.15 uh, on Sunday, we are we were hanging out with brothers and sisters, man. That's it's right. the after wrap. So after please come by. We got special guests, and you never know who's going to stop by. Even like the, the last Sweet. after wrap, yeah. dude, Sheila E. stopped yeah. by. Yeah. You know, so you just never know what's going to happen. There's going to be performances. There's going to be fun interaction. But most of all, it's just community. That's right. right? It's being That's together. Right. Pastor Ramel. You may not know uh, what's going to happen, but I do know that we're going to have fun yeah. no matter what. So that you can be certain of. So Absolutely. we can't see. Wait to catch up with you all at the After Wrap. Yeah, so check it in the uh, descriptions. Try to find that information. Find us on the After Wrap. It's been a lot of fun. Right. And we're, we're going to get through this. And we're not just going to get yes. through it. We're going to thrive. That's and we're right. going to be Absolutely. stronger. We're going to be better. We're going to be even more together than we've ever yes. been before. Yeah, May the Lord be with you and prosper you, keep you, shine his face upon you, give you peace. And we are sons and daughters, and we just thank you for tuning in and stay connected to what's going on at Cathedral of Faith. And as always, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Boom. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you. Strength. Nothing is impossible